Mark, your videos get tens of thousands of views, if not hundreds of thousands sometimes. But we both know educational YouTubers often struggle to get even thousands of views on their videos. So I've got to ask you, what's your process for creating videos that you know are going to get so many views? I'm really boring about processes. So it's, it's one of those things that is it's the, the least sexy side of this business. Not that there are many sexy sides of it, really, but um, it's, it's, it's something that I've, right from the start, I've really been on top of in terms of developing processes that are fixed to a degree. There, there is some movement in there, but the, the, the most important thing is, is that they don't change very often. So right from the, the word go, when I come up with an idea for a video, to the point when I just click publish or schedule and it actually ends up on YouTube, the, th the stuff that happens in between is just completely nailed down. Um, so I, I always start writing. And I know that sounds fairly obvious when it comes to YouTube because there has to be a script or some form of you know, bullet points, etc., that you work from. But for me, it really is a writing process to begin with. So I start with the obviously the, the idea. Um, that idea, the first thing that happens with it is that it gets written into a blog post uh, that gets published on my website, onto Medium, the same same piece of text. Um, and from there, that blog post is basically chopped up into a, not not a script, it's more of a, a bullet-pointed version of that blog post, just to make it easy to reference okay. while I'm sitting in front of the camera and rambling on, basically. Um, and then from there, I sit down, I do the A-roll, I film B-roll if I need to. I don't always need to f film B-roll if I have, you know, in my library, b-roll of whatever it is i'm reviewing because obviously it's, it's mainly tech stuff i'm doing um mm -hmm. edit that edit all ed edit the, the entire thing together create the thumbnail i am one of these people who does the thumbnail right at the end i know some people start with the title wow the that's controversial um, i know uh i've got lots of thoughts on thumbnails actually but i don't spend very long on them either and we can probably cover that at some stage but um sure. but yes yeah, so i do, do the thumbnail right at the end then schedule it and it's it's done so i mean that's a a very condensed kind of explanation of explanation of how it all happens, but it's blog post, rough script, filming, edit, publish. Okay, so these thumbnails are done last minute, um, which is very impressive. Uh, as they, I, I think they're they're, they're great. Um, let's jump into that in a, in a second and hear about your thumbnail process. Um, but jump into the start. So you said it starts with writing, and you're you're doing blog posts first, right? Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, I'm I'm a writer first and foremost. I've, I've I've written my entire life since about the age of twelve or thirteen. So for me, that comes really naturally. I'm I'm very comfortable with words. Um, and I don't. I mean, I've said this quite a bit in in other videos and you know on social media that I, I don't really think you can be a successful YouTuber without being a writer. And that doesn't. I mean, that that might put some people off. But I, well, I don't mean that you've got to be a fantastic writer. I'm not a fantastic writer. I just write the way I've always written. I break all the rules, you know, if you compared my writing against what you're supposed to do in A-level English, it would fall apart. But um, I don't care because the, the whole point is that I write in a style that I enjoy writing. It seems to work for a certain group of people. Um, so you don't have to be a fantastic, you know, wordsmith. You don't, have to be, you don't have to be Shakespeare, but you do have to be able to craft a story. And for me, that always starts with that blog post. That's, that's where it all, all begins, basically. Okay, so you mentioned story then. Um, so... It sounds like you think story is quite important uh, when you're making a YouTube video. Is that correct? Huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, I can't think of any YouTube video that I've watched and enjoyed that isn't a story. And it doesn't matter what that what the thing's about. I'm a massive fan of um, uh, Casey Neistat. He's he's my one of my YouTube heroes, and I'm sure lots of people who, who watch this are probably the same. But um, and he he demonstrates that storytelling ability brilliantly. You know, he has a very defined beginning middle and end it has the whole character arc that you see in hollywood um and although his videos are traditionally blog uh, sorry vlog style lifestyle type things which do have those elements obviously it's, it's easier in a way to tell a story in that in that way in, in that niche even if you're doing tech reviews so if, you know, if i'm reviewing a, a phone for instance i can tell a story about this phone in fact it's a really good example because phones are boring greg they're, they're I, I love tech it's the reason i, I started this channel but we're, we're at a point now where this stuff is incredibly dull because it's so good you know you can't buy a bad phone you can't buy a bad car you can't buy a bad lap laptop unless you really look hard and um, so because of that you, you have two choices you, you either sit there and waffle on about the specs of this thing which anyone can do just by reading apple's website or you build a narrative around it so you know, what is it why does why why does that that phone matter to me 
why do I like it? Why do I not like it? And then the reasons around that is where the story starts to come out, basically. Okay. Um, that's really interesting. I'm sure a lot of people watching this, you know, they, they create educational content, informational content, and they wouldn't necessarily have thought about including story into those videos. They just, I, I think there's something that you just need to give as much information and as much value as possible in these types of videos. Um, you gave a few hints there into how you weave story into your content. Um, you said you're thinking about how the uh, the tech that you're looking at affects you and, and your thoughts around it. Can you maybe give a bit more insight into into how you approach weaving story into your you know, educational content? Yeah, because I suppose what I do is educational, really, isn't it? I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I'm helping. My, my role, I think, is to help people make the right purchasing decision. And to do that, you have to educate them on this stuff. So if they're thinking about buying a MacBook, for instance, they may come to my channel not really knowing enough about it. And they, they are, my role is then to, to educate them on the, on the stuff that matters to them. And the only way that you can really do that in a way that is going to satisfy them and make them leave the channel thinking, ah, that guy was really helpful. I'll hit subscribe and hit the, the bell uh, notifications, etc." is if you can relate to, to their, their situation. So it's coming up with something which you know right from the start is a problem they have. Cool, so it just pops up one of your videos recently where you're talking about a MacBook. Um, so hopefully that helps you kind of uh, talk us through how you we story into your videos. Yeah, I mean, this is a great example because it, although it's, it's, it includes something about the MacBook, it's actually, the story is actually about the, the iPad mini and it's about traveling abroad with just the iPad mini as your main computer. So immediately you've got a story there because I mean, firstly, who would do that, but equally, because it's such an unusual thing to do and such a risky thing to do, it immediately, like I say, you've got a story there, you've got a narrative, which is is interesting even before you started, hopefully, anyway, before you started watching the video. Um, and you weave the MacBook thing in because the, the whole, the, the point of this one is that normally I, I would go, if I'm going abroad somewhere, I'll take my MacBook. I wouldn't dare not take it because I'm thinking I might need to edit videos while I'm away. I'm really comfortable with Mac OS. I love iPads, but the thought of just having an iPad is frightening, you know, and being miles, hundreds of miles from home, thousands, thousands of miles from home is frightening. So immediately there's going to be people watching who are thinking I'm the same, you know, I'm always using my MacBook. I wouldn't leave the house without it, but actually I've got this tiny little iPad, which is thinner, lighter, probably might have better battery. I wonder what would happen if I just started taking that away. You know, could, could I go into an iPad only life if you like? So that's yeah. how that story will hopefully resonate with people, people who are fed up with taking their MacBooks out and, you know, breaking their back and that sort of stuff. And that's, that's a great, that video is a great example really of where the, the story is very obvious from the start, hopefully. Yeah. I'll bring it up again. Um, that's amazing. So you have, you know, you, you, you know that you want to do a MacBook video where you're talking about the MacBook, um, or, or sorry, the iPad mini, uh, and you're thinking of a scenario that is going to connect with viewers that they're going to be able to relate to. So in, in this video, for example, being away from home without a MacBook, but with just an, an iPad mini. Um, so that sounds like, is that part of your workflow there? Like when you're coming up with a video, how do I make this relatable or make the viewer connect with what's happening in it? Yeah, it's really important. I mean, it's, it's, it's probably the main thing at the top of my top of my mind when I'm thinking of this sort of stuff. Um, and it doesn't really matter what is driving the video ori originally. So I do a lot of sponsored videos. So quite often a video will be driven by a sponsor requirement. So if I need to, you know, I, I think that that was quite a good example where that video is being sponsored by, I think, two different brands. So I needed to feature their products in a video. And it suddenly made sense to do something with the iPad mini. And then I start thinking, okay, I've got a sponsored video but it's not just good enough just to make a sponsored video and get it out there and hope that it does well i've got to then build in like i say that narrative and that relatability for the audience because the audience is smart they're not going to watch a video that is that is clearly just has just been published for for the sponsor requirement which mm -hmm. you, know, you do see that occasionally i've probably done that myself unwittingly when i was a bit less less um experienced i suppose but yeah, for me, I then have to start thinking immediately, how can I drive value for the audience? And that's for two reasons. One of them is because it means they'll watch it <laughs> and they'll carry on watching it. They'll watch it, hopefully, as, as for as long as possible to, towards the end. Um, and secondly, it means that I, it should bring the views in. You know, it should it should help me build the audience and get more subscribers, get more people hitting the bell uh, and people coming back for more, basically. That's super informative. Um, you've mentioned, I have a question to stick in into that a bit further. So 
you said that it all starts with writing and you start with your written blog post and then the video comes after. And then you've also um, run us through how you like to weave a narrative into the videos and make it relatable to the viewer. Does that narrative exist in the written blog post at the start or are you adding it in when it's converting to a video? No, it's, it's there. So right from the start, the, the blog post is is there. It's, uh, it's the, the, Sorry, the narrative is within the blog post because the, okay. the video is pretty much just a video version of that blog. Um, not a huge amount changes, really. I, mean, I, I don't read it word for word. So the, the blogs are typically anywhere between 1,200 to 1,500 words. So they're quite big, quite big pieces. So although I don't read it, like I say, word for word, I do what I do because I work from that bullet pointed version of that blog post. I just pick out the bits I think make the most sense when I'm when I'm recording recording the A roll. So it's pretty much it's just a, it's a condensed video version of the blog. Gotcha. And um, and also I think with, with the difference in in types of content here. So with the blog, you get a bit more leeway. You can make it a bit flabbier. It can be a bit longer. Um, doesn't matter too much. Whereas as you know, on YouTube, you've got seconds to get people interested. You can't have anything. And there's a lot of stuff you leave on the cutting room floor just to make sure people stay, you know, the, you know, the retention remains high. So it is definitely a condensed version of that blog post. Right. We've been hearing great tips so far on how to get more views on YouTube. But if you're like me, you'll know that no matter how hard you work, some months views might be up and other months our views might be down. And when looking at ad revenue, that means that some months we might earn a lot and other months we might not. And I, for one, do not like that monthly inconsistency that comes with our YouTube earnings. So I went away and I found out that YouTubers like Jev and Dovi that you'll see on screen now, and even smaller YouTubers like Brendan Washington are using a platform called Uscreen to solve this problem. What is Uscreen and how does it help us earn monthly recurring income, you might ask? Let me explain. So going back to Jevon, he's used Uscreen to build the creator film school that you'll see on screen now, where you can see here he's teaching his audience the skills they need to create awesome videos. And if they want to, his viewers can join the creator film school by just committing to a $29 a month membership fee. Jumping back to Brandon here, he's used Uscreen to open the Creative Fam Academy, where if we scroll down, we can see he's hosting a ton of courses for his viewers that they can access when they join his monthly membership, which if we scroll down here, we can see is ranging from $4.99 for the basic stuff to $79.99 a month to join. And just focusing in on some of the use screen features Brandon is using to convince his viewers to sign up to that monthly fee, uh, we can see here he's offering live stream trainings to his viewers. They can join an internal community inside this membership space, and they just get access to a ton of extra guides, courses, video content, and Q and A's. And jumping back to Jevon here, even though his views on YouTube might be going up and down each month, if he can convert a hundred of his viewers to sign up to his $29 a month membership, well, that's $2,900 he's making every month, regardless of how many views he gets on YouTube. Seeing these creators doing this solidifies inside me how great I think building a membership space around your YouTube channel is. It generates you recurring consistent income every month and it just means that you're not obsessing over whether your views are up or down on youtube month in month out in fact if you look on screen now you'll see that i'm using new screen myself to build up my own membership platform i need to use one of their templates to be honest, to make mine look a bit better because it's looking a bit basic at the moment, but it's a work in progress. And by using Uscreen to build out this membership space, I'm able to send emails directly to people that sign up and become members. I'm able to offer free trials and provide coupon codes to my viewers. And jumping over here, you'll also see the behind the scenes of what the community space looks like inside a Uscreen membership area where members of my membership space can come and have a chat with each other, speak to me, and just build a community inside my membership platform. And later, if I wanted to, I could bring my membership space into my own white label mobile and TV app, which means people could access it on iPhone, Android, Fire Stick, Roku TV, all of those usual suspects. It's a no-brainer for YouTubers like you and me making educational content to build membership sites alongside our channels to just get that guaranteed recurring revenue, I recommend using Uscreen to do it. Thankfully, they're sponsors of this podcast. So if you want to get set up, you can use my partner link that you'll find below in the description to this video. Thanks. Let's dig into that then. How do you get people interested when they start watching your video and keep them interested? What goes through your head? 
it's the hook so um there's two sections for those there's the hook and then there's the intro i haven't invented this this is just again it's, it's hollywood stuff it's it's stuff I, I think the original um person who i really kind of was inspired by with this was was ali abdal who um, had this kind of structure for his videos which he had taken from someone else you know Greg, we, we've all, there's only seven songs there's only seven youtube videos we're, we're all sure. copying each other basically but it works and um the hook is the thing right at the start of the video which lasts in my videos these days i've got it down to hopefully quite a fine art where it's, it's a few seconds so it's it will be me sitting down in the chair over there or walking up to the camera and just saying something you know saying something like I've been trying this for the last three weeks and I've got lots of thoughts, that sort of stuff. So immediately they're like, okay, right, what, what, what are those thoughts? The second part of that is the intro, which is when I give them a little bit more information about what that thing is and you know what they can expect for the rest of the video. So again, you're, you're constantly drip feeding them information with, with cliffhangers, et cetera. Um, so keep, keep in the curiosity and the suspense. I've got an idea. Is there a, a video that comes to mind where you, you've done this recently uh, that we could maybe watch as an example? Um, most of them, to be honest, I mean, I, yeah. I, like I say, I'm, I'm quite proud of those hooks now because I, I do, I'm really brutal with them, Greg. I, I, I think like any YouTuber, when I first started, I was a little bit overindulgent with the intro. So I'd spend a little you know, a long time saying, hi, welcome back to the channel. I hope you, you know, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. No one cares. No one's going to subscribe. Mm. You don't know who you are. So I found that I too. get right. In, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think one, uh, if you just scroll up again, I think probably a good yeah. one to, um, demonstrate is the the one that says boom the, the craziest headphones great so let's start watching this and um i'll pause it after maybe 10 15 seconds mark and you can talk us through what happens yeah go for it cool i wasn't going to review this pair of headphones because it's just another pair of headphones isn't it only it really really isn't okay is that a, a good place to start yeah so that's the hook yes yeah. that's 100 awesome. hook. And that, that, in in my um sort of rough script i have a section called hook so that bit would have been in there it was probably that looked like i think from memory it was actually scripted so what, what i was saying i was you know pretty much reading from something um but the, the, the reason i think that works the reason i did it like that is because first of all you see the product so the first the, you don't see me at all you see the product sitting there it's clearly a pair of headphones so i'm kind of following up on the the thumbnail which features the same uh, uh, you know, the same product on there and then i come into frame and within i'm not sure how many seconds that was but it, yeah, eight or ten seconds or something i've basically said the, the you you want to hear this you know this this there's something about these headphones which is unusual and uh, the reason i did that is because i've reviewed loads of pairs of headphones and again a bit like uh, phones they can be quite boring because they they all do the same thing they play music they have noise cancelling <laughs> they have alexa built in they all do the same stuff whereas these headphones yeah. do genuinely have a, a unique feature which is this kind of rumbling bass thing that goes on on the on the cans um so but i don't say i don't tell them that i don't tell the audience that i just say there's something about these headphones that is very different. The other thing I'm doing out here as well, just for which I think the viewers might find interesting, um, is that the headphone stand is very deliberately placed on there. Um, the reason for that is that I use that headphone stand in all of my headphone videos, and it's one of the most successful um, affiliate partnerships that I have. It's with a company called Banks, um, and it sells like hotcakes basically. So from a from a business person's perspective, I'm thinking. Let's get that front and center. As always, people like that headphone case. And I think what I do then in the intro, I even, I even reference it and say, look, they're not sponsoring this video, but if you like the look of that headphone case, click the link in the description. So immediately gotcha. after the hook, I've, I've included a high ticket affiliate um, partnership in there. And I've featured a new brand, which in this case is Skull Candy with the headphones. So there's, yeah. there's a lot going on in 10 seconds. <laughs> There is, there really is what I was thinking exactly. There's a lot going on there. Um, but that's, that just goes to show the level of detail and craftsmanship that you're putting into your videos. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, I hope so. I mean, I think again, it, it reveals how much goes into this, like you're saying, and that's what people perhaps don't realize how much work and a lot of this comes from experience, obviously, but it, it there is, there's a lot of planning that goes into this. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, um, just for people who are just learning about hooks for the first time, and they've just seen that example, would you say the most important thing for a hook is to, there's two ways of saying the same thing here, drive curiosity, leave people wanting more, just wanting to see what comes next. 
Is that right? Yeah, it's a classic kind of curiosity gap. You just you give them enough information, so you're not really taking them, you know, extracting the Michael, and um, you but you're giving them not enough for them to, you know, say, okay, I've got everything I need. I'm going to disappear now. They want they want to hang around and find out what it is about those headphones that is so, yeah, amazing, basically. Mm. So. You're obviously intentionally not revealing that feature in the title or in thumbnail too, because if you do, people will already know what the special feature is and there's no reason to keep watching the video, right? Yeah, you've lost them at that point, haven't you? It's, it's something, I think also in the intro, I don't really mention, I mentioned what it is at some stage, but again, I build up to it. I don't kind of say straight away, these headphones have this haptic bass thing, which is amazing. I actually kind of waffle on it a little bit until I get to that stage. And then the actual demonstration of it, as much as you can demonstrate that on the video, um, comes within the the rest of the video, you know, within what I call the value section, which resides between whatever it might be, two minutes and, and eight minutes. It's within that big chunk, you know, the main chunk of the video where I actually talk about that thing and, and reveal what it is. Okay, that's really interesting. Let's stick on that point for a second. So you've got your hook, which, which you start off with. Obviously... The thumbnail and title kind of act as a visual hook before they start watching. And when they start watching, they have the actual hook in the video, um, which was the first 11 seconds we just saw. You've just said the value section comes two minutes in. Can you give us a bit more insight into that that outline for each video that you're following? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you have that hook, which we just watched. Then you have the intro. And the intro is probably another minute or so, a minute and a half or something. Depends if it includes a sponsor read, which sometimes it does. I think that one did. Um, maybe actually no, it didn't. To be fair, um, so yeah, you get about about a minute, a minute and a half of um, intro, and then we go into what I call the value, and that is the main chunk of the video, really. So I suppose if you think about it, like a newspaper headline, I, I, I do. I always think about the traditional side of this, which is the you know, the above the fold thing. When you, when you pick up a newspaper, is the title, it's the headline. Then you get you get an image, which is the thumbnail in this case, and then you get the first paragraph, which is in bold, and that's the thing that hooks you in. So you buy the news newspaper, you go home, stick it on your coffee table open it up and you read the rest of it and that's where you get all of the stuff that the the um the journalist has promised that's basically the value section in a, in a youtube video you have sure. to deliver there if you don't you've lost you know you you've gained so much trust from that person having even though it's only seconds you know or, or you know, two or three minutes that's a long long time in youtube in youtube land and you've gained their trust right at the start if you then spend the rest of the of the video not delivering you know if those headphones for instance didn't if, if i if i was kind of making out that the the special feature was fast charging or something that's not interesting at all so that that i'd have i'd have let the audience down at that stage so that's i have to deliver on whatever it is that i've promised basically makes complete sense i think people watching this um who are just learning about these concepts and you know you said that the the intro is the first 10 to 15 seconds maybe and that's to just drive further, further curiosity the value that you include a start you start around two minutes in two minutes to eight minutes in which provides kind of the the answer or resolves the curiosity that was made in the hook but you said there's an intro between the um the hook and the value section and i bet people watching this are thinking well if the intro is just delaying the value that the viewer gets what's to stop them leaving in that section so my question would be what what is the purpose of that intro? How are you um, creating an intro that doesn't lose people? Well, you're setting the scene again. So I think I think if you deliver the value too quickly, so if, if I went from that hook to revealing what the thing, the special thing is about those headphones, I'm going to lose the audience probably because they're going to get to the stage where they think, okay, that sounds amazing. I'll check them out, go to Amazon, buy them or whatever, and then just get distracted and go elsewhere. So I've lost, I've, I've lost them from the channel. As far as YouTube's, YouTube's concerned, I've lost them from YouTube, and that's the worst thing you can do because our job as, as creators is to keep people on YouTube for as long as possible on our own channels. That's how you, that's how you become successful, basically, because it's what YouTube wants. Um, so you have to, you have to again, just keep nudging off the the payoff. You have to keep. It's like a film, really, Greg. So you know, if you watch a, if you watched a a movie tomorrow, and within the first ten minutes, you know the the, yeah, the the kind of the peak of the character arc and the successful thing that happens at the end of it then mm. you're going to walk out of the theater at that point aren't you whereas if it builds up sure. gently but if it does it you know kind of very smartly and without you know like i say without kind of disrespecting the audience then uh, you've got a much better chance of keeping people for as long as possible on that video basically mm. that's really insightful 
really valuable. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a skill to develop. I think the skill really is building hype or curiosity, and keeping like slowly building up to the reveal of that um, curiosity, but in a way that uh, keeps the viewers engaged, and then they don't disengage and, and move on. Um, and I think that, that sounds like a definite skill that people need to develop. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's it's hard not to kind of blurt it out and be and kind of reveal the great, the amazing thing to begin with. And it, it, it I think really it just comes with practice, really, Greg. It's one of those things that you have to keep refining. And I'm, I'm not a master at it at all. And quite often I get it wrong, but it, it's recognizing where you've got it wrong and you know looking at the retention graphs on on your YouTube mm. videos and actually doing that thing where which sounds a bit you know kind of um, you know it sounds a bit of an odd thing to do, but watching your own videos you know, I, I do regularly watch videos that i've published i go back you know perhaps a couple of weeks and, and check them out and it's so valuable because you although sometimes it's a bit cringe making uh, you do watch things and think oh i got that right that was, that was actually a pretty good video or you think oh, i could i could have done that better i was i, I, I really waffled on it. for way too long exactly and um yeah yeah it's just a it's a constant learning process definitely cool so I think the two biggest takeaways I've taken from this conversation so far, people are going to find really valuable is the importance of writing, uh, rather than just turning the camera on and shooting a video, writing and planning for, uh, creating a video. And also, and you just mentioned this at the end, going back and kind of reviewing and analyzing your, your previous content and really learning from what you did in the past, what works well and what doesn't. So we've got two things there. As we're running uh, towards the end of the conversation, is there anything else that you think is just really important for creators in the day-to-day -day grind that they should be remembering when they're making their videos? I think not getting too hung up on the the technical side of it and the, the, the kind of the filmmaking part of it. And what I mean by that is that I mean I, I love I love that side of it. I love I love the um, the technical side of the the actual camera side of things, the audio. I've got quite a big history in both those areas, so it's just a passion of mine. But you can get a bit lost in that. You can get lost in, you know, getting the perfect lighting, getting the sound perfect, and doing this, that, and the other. And I think some of the best videos that I've made have probably been the worst produced. So the the ones that I've kind of done fairly off the cuff, um, the lighting hasn't been perfect. Uh, the audio may have been a bit too hot, or you know, yeah, whatever. The certain issues. Um, but actually, be, again, because the story was there, and I got, I got something right with the with the actual the whole. Um, pro the, the whole narrative of the, of the, of the video it, it didn't matter none of that stuff mattered and I've, I, I've i've witnessed other people not no one that i'm kind of close to but i have seen other youtubers who are clearly so invested in making the perf the most perfect looking uh, video or the most perfect sounding or picking the most amazing locations and none of that really matters which it sounds brutal, and um, but you can waste an awful lot of time doing that stuff when the audience doesn't really care. And the thing that kind of illustrates this is that you, you do see a lot of very successful YouTubers uh, and, and also content creators on other platforms who make the worst looking videos. They will just use their phone and they'll have hundreds of thousands of, of subscribers. And the reason yeah. I've got those subscribers is because they can tell a really good story. And it doesn't, as long as you can see them and hear them, no one cares basically. So that you have to find, I think if, if you're like me, so if you do like this this part of it, the whole technical, technical side of it, it's finding that balance between being a perfectionist with that and not letting it get in the way of your process basically. That's the, and that's yeah. really hard, but I, I think I'm getting there. <laughs> Slowly. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're, you're questioning it clearly. You're doing lots of things right from looking at your channel, Mark, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Um, I just, just to tell in that I can completely resonate with that pit, common pitfall that you just explained that YouTubers can fall down. Um, that's been something, well, I set some context. I, I've always been into photography and video myself, um, and I think potentially the technical side, uh, I've had a really strong interest in the technical side, and I've... And the more and more I'm talking to successful YouTubers like yourself and, and other YouTubers in the educational space, I'm realizing that I've probably over prioritized that side of, you know, nice editing transitions and, and make sure the video is as good as possible. And really it just comes, what I'm learning from speaking to yourself and other creators like you is it comes down to connection with the audience and telling a good story. Um, mm. And that's the majority of uh, what makes the impact on YouTube. So. I can speak talking from my own experience. I can definitely see how a lot of YouTubers fall down that trap of over prioritizing editing and visuals and, and sound and all that sort of stuff. 
Yeah, and just quickly, I'm, we, I know I mentioned very briefly the the thumbnail earlier, and I'll, uh, the, I probably will get some heat for this, but it's something which, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I do I do believe quite strongly that I mean most of these thumbnails here, Greg, at mm-hmm. maximum I've spent fifteen minutes on probably. Um, <laughs> wow. Or well, on the, the Pixel 7a, that's a great example. So if you go a bit further up, uh, yep. top right, that one there, the Pixel 7a versus Pixel 7, Pixel 6a. I'm not joking. I made that thumbnail in probably five minutes. It was literally <laughs> just a case of standing over there, pointing the phone at the camera, clicking, clicking the shutter, doing a very quick, because I'm a bit old-fashioned, I do edit the video, the the, uh, the photos raw, um, sure. do the, sort out the raw photo, stick it into Canva, and ju- literally just the product names, part of the product name, 7, 8, mm. done. And that's had 18,000 views. Wow. Um, it did, interestingly, that absolutely tanked to begin with. So, th- so that video was a 10 out of 10, which everyone watching this who's got YouTube Studio will know what that means. The dreaded that's, 10 out of 10. Yeah, the dreaded bombed video, basically. Mm. Um, I d- however, I didn't change the, the, um, the thumbnail. I was comfortable that the thumbnail was okay. I changed the title, funnily enough. I can't, can't think what the original title was, but it was something different. Mm. Um, and I think that is what rock, Rocket p- propelled it basically overnight. So I woke up and it was a two out of ten out of nowhere. Wow. Um, and the one thing, again, not to go on to the back to those two, to thumbnails too much, but um, the one thing that always sticks in my mind, I think it was, um, excuse the pun, Think Media mm-hmm. uh, on their podcast. They were talking about this. And I think one of, one of the guys there said, he said, I remember one of our most popular videos we've ever published. Um, we we published it, didn't think anything of it, went back to it and thought, oh, I'm amazing, it's one out of ten, it's doing fantastically. And we realized that we hadn't put a thumbnail on it. It just done the, the default thing of grabbing a frame from the video. <laughs> oh, wow. And he said, at that point, we thought, maybe they aren't that important. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not kind of. Dis, I'm not um, kind of disparaging. Uh, being being disparaging about thumbnail design, and there's some. I mean, my thumbnails compared to some people's is uh, terrible, really. And there's people who put an awful lot of effort into them and take great pride in doing so, and it probably does have a huge impact on their on their views. But for me, I've never personally got into that that part of it. Really, it, it, for me, it just doesn't work that way. Um, so I think if if like me, you're not a designer, you don't want to spend too much time on thumbnails. Mm. If you look at mine, mine are fairly simple. It's just me and a product and a, a piece of text. That's it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't sweat it too much. You know, people that say, oh, you need to spend four hours on your, or, you know, spend 80% of your time in the thumbnail. That's, I don't agree with that at all, I'm afraid. Do yeah. as lo- much as you need to and focus on a really good title. And more importantly, Greg, the, the, make sure the video is relevant and it comes out at a relevant time. If you do that, it will perform well. <laughs> well, it should do anyway. Yeah, that's, that's really insightful. Yeah, um, people potentially putting too much focus and attention on the wrong things um when yeah they're 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 not that substantial when you look at the grand picture to get your priorities right people (laughs) all right mark that's been so informative so valuable thank you so much for for joining us um you know i came across your channel a few months ago and i thought your videos are great i've shown this my own community um so i just had to ask you to be on this podcast and we've been really lucky to get you so really appreciate you being here Make sure to check out Mark Ellis reviews. If you're watching this and you want to uh, get some tech reviews in the future, Mark's your guy. Uh, anything you want to finish off with, Mark, or are we happy to leave it there? All good. Yeah, just just remain yeah. consistent. That's the other thing. Just, just keep keep publishing. That's all you've got to do. Yeah, too right. Um, I've made that mistake of, of being inconsistent and you just slow down your momentum, don't you? And um, yeah, so great advice. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. Um, see you soon. Cheers, Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you.